How's it going guys? Conviction 454 here. Uh, and I know it's been forever since I've uploaded a video. Um, but I just kind of wanted to discuss uh, essentially my journey to getting my CompTIA Network Plus certification. Um, this has technically been a certification that I've been studying for for a really long. Um, I was on and off with studying for it for about, I would say, three, four months, but we're talking about back in like 2021. Um, and it's <laughs> I eventually uh, got back into studying for it um, at the beginning of this year. And I've been studying, uh, I would say I studied for about six months and then I just took the exam today and I passed it. Um, now I only passed it by about 40 or 50 points, but um, also I, I apologize for the webcam angle. Um, I have a webcam already that's stacked onto one monitor on my left side and then there's the one that I'm supposed to be looking at right now which is on this side um but yes yeah, essentially what I wanted to do is just give like a brief rundown on what I personally saw on the exam without disclosing too much information and just kind of some tips and tricks and uh, maybe some um, the resources that I use to pass the exam which is a ton, I'll admit. So what I'm probably gonna do is at the end of the video, I'll just uh, like leave a link in the description for any sort of resources that I used and um, any sort of like practice tests, uh, practice labs, things of that nature. But um, yeah, so I took the test this morning, not even, not even three hours ago. I took it at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, the test had 70 questions on it. Now, in terms of performance-based questions, there were five of them. I was not expecting that many, uh, but honestly, I don't necessarily think they were difficult questions per se. Now, they they did take up the most time on the exam, but I uh, what I did was I decided to flag all five of them and then come back to them later, and I addressed the multiple choice questions first. Um, now, with there being five performance-based questions, there were about 65 or so uh, multiple choice questions. Those were pretty easy, I would have to say. Um, in terms of the frequency of the different types of questions I saw, uh, for those wondering, there really wasn't a whole lot of sub questions. I think three of the performance-based questions involved a little bit of sub -netting. but what I will advise to you right now is uh, Professor Messer has a seven second subnet video that he uploaded, I think, years ago for the, the N10, um, I think it's the N10008. Um, and I used that video, and specifically, I used the chart that he had at the end of the video in order to answer any subnet questions that I may have had. And really, it, it made subnetting like super simple. Um, now, because there weren't really a lot of subnetting questions in the first place, I can't necessarily say that I've mastered subnetting just by using that one chart. And I'm not going to say it, but I will say that, that for the questions that I received, um, that chart was really like the deal. As a matter of fact, it probably it it, it probably um, was the deciding factor when it came to whether I was going to pass or not. Even though I passed by like 40 points, so um, not a big deal. Um, now, in terms of any other more prevalent questions that I saw, um, I would definitely say know your connector types, um, both both for fiber and uh, for Ethernet. Um, obviously, know the difference between the different Ethernet standards like 10 base T, 1000 base T, and then for fiber, um, there's a few of them. It's like, uh, I think it's 100 base, uh, I think it's SX and LX, and then there's the 10 gigabit iterations of those, which is SR and LR, I may have those wrong. Uh, I think that was actually the part of the test that I did the worst on because when it comes to um, cabling and stuff, I, I personally found that uh, that section of the network plus kind of boring, admittedly. And so I had a really difficult time focusing on it, which I know that kind of sounds bad on my part because it's like you're trying to study for an exam but and, and then you're talking about some of the different materials being boring but it's like that's <laughs> just kind of how I felt about it so um yeah I would say definitely know your cabling connections know your connector types um 
there were a few questions that involved just having some general knowledge on the network troubleshooting steps, which is, you know, the seven steps. Um, you know, obviously knowing when to, um, like, document your findings, uh, know, know when to establish a theory of probable cause, things of that nature. Have a good idea of the order in which those seven steps take place. And then um, there were like a few questions where you had to have some, I'll say, relatively extensive knowledge on how the OSI model works. Uh, honestly, the multiple choice questions were very easy. Um, there were some questions about the wireless Ethernet standards, like uh, what's the difference between 802.11b versus G? What's the difference between uh, A and AC? Uh, and the question will be laid out is like, which of the following standards would sh would be the best to accommodate the network that you're supposed to be configuring, essentially. Um, so yeah, I, I would say none of the questions were necessarily difficult outside of, there was one performance-based question in particular that looked difficult at first, but the only reason it looked difficult is because I did not study access control lists all that much. But when you look at the question, you realize that the question isn't really asking anything complicated. Um, if I remember the question correctly, there were four different subnets. Um, there was a management server and then there were some other, there was a group of workstations and there was two other collections of servers in its own individual subnet. And what you're supposed to do is configure the ACL to allow traffic between the different subnets and then deny everything else. Um, when I first looked at that, I think the only reason why I, it took me longer than like 10 minutes to solve it is because I had to keep looking back and forth between the question and the diagram that they gave me. And, it's bec and the, um, I'll say the interface in general was kind of clunky and unorganized so it's like I had to keep clicking through and then I had to click and drag the prompt over to make sure that I could see both of them and make sure that I'm configuring everything properly. Um, when it comes to CompTIA exams uh, that's just kind of how their layout is and you just gotta be able to work with it but I wouldn't necessarily say it was a difficult question when I go back and really look at it. Um, you're not going to see anything like implicit deny or implicit allow or explicit deny stuff like that is just going to be a really well at least for for my particular exam uh it's either you're going to allow like rdp for example or ssh or you're not going to allow it it's it was that simple at least for me um in terms of the other performance based questions i had to configure a screen subnet for a company uh and i had to basically I, like I, I will say this, um, the questions weren't very detailed or intricate. For for those who um, who took the questions, I think it's called um, Cert Master, uh, as well as Jason Dion's questions. Those questions were harder. They were way harder than the questions on the exam, and I think they actually do a pretty good job at preparing you for the actual exam. I have to I have to give Jason Dion, Professor Messer, Mike Myers. I have to give them all credit because. They know what they're talking about, and this is now my second CompTIA certification that I've received. I got my A plus back in 2021, and I just got my Net plus now, and it's going to be on a Security plus for me. Um, and let me tell you, uh, <laughs> when I answered that last question, uh, well, what I did was I got five performance-based questions, like I said before, and on that fifth question, I was like, okay, I don't really have enough time to review it to the extent that I want to review it. So what I'm gonna to have to do is just start picking answers and that's what I did. Um, now I know I probably got some things wrong because I'm not gonna necessarily say 90 minutes isn't enough time. I actually feel like 90 minutes is perfect to figure out whether or not a candidate actually knows what they're doing when it comes to the different CompTIA Network Plus standards. Um, but the truth is I, <laughs> Uh, if I tried to list out all the standards right now, I couldn't do it. And I'll admit, I didn't look at the standards. Um, all I did was, um, the first thing I did for the Network Plus, I looked at Mike Myers' course. I got that for free through Udemy Business from my job. I looked at all that and I took down a whole lot of notes. But the funny thing about it is, I never really extensively viewed my notes. 
that's going to sound weird to a lot of people, but I took down all of these notes and then realized, you know, I don't really need the notes. What I did need were practice questions. Do a whole, as many of them as you can. Do all of Jason Dion's exams. Do them. And then what I would recommend that you do for those who don't necessarily want to read the textbook, because me personally, I don't like reading textbooks like that. Just do the questions. And in those questions, it'll tell you why the answer is the correct answer, but it doesn't necessarily give all the details as to why it's right and why the other answer choices are wrong. So what I would just do is take whatever feedback you can get from those questions and then put down in your notes, uh, in your own words, what the explanation was for why the question was right. And then look at the other answer choices and then ask yourself, why are these wrong? What like what is this concept? Do I know what this acronym is? Like VRP, for example, or OSPF or RIP. Like what are those things? Do some research on those if you're not sure, and just take that and then just continue to study, uh, really at your own pace. And then eventually you're gonna find that a lot of the concepts in the Network Plus aren't really meant to be difficult to understand. I mean, it is an entry level cert, they say, so. It, it, it's it doesn't really require a whole lot of uh, intensive knowledge on any particular subject honestly it just it, the truth is it's a lot of memorization and it's probably going to be about I'd say 60 70 percent memorization and the rest of that percentage is going to be applied knowledge I would say um, and I will I, I think um, just to uh, be a little bit more specific on another performance-based question I got, it was really about uh, just configuring different like IP settings, like default gateway and IP addressing, and um, they'll put DNS servers in there, but DNS servers weren't really important, at least for the question that I got. Um, and yeah, that's what I can remember anyway from just taking the exam and passing it. But yeah, overall, I would say. Um, it, it's not a terribly difficult exam. I heard somewhere that a whole lot of people, like anywhere between like 50 and 60% of first test takers, they end up failing the exam. But when I looked at the exam, I'm like, I don't know if this exam is necessarily all that hard. But at the same time, I know full well that there are a lot of people that just aren't good at taking tests. They get nervous. Heck, towards the end of, end of the test, I was nervous because, you know, I want to pass, but I, 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 I see myself as the type of guy that's like, okay, you know, if I pass or fail, at the end of the day, I need to take that feedback and utilize it to my advantage so that I don't get so caught up in what happened in the past and I can focus on how to move forward and improve myself. And I feel like that's how everybody should take failure. Just take it as the first step to success. Don't delve so deeply into, oh, I failed. Now, you know, now I feel bad about it. Now I'm going to sit here and sulk about it. Don't, please don't do that. If you don't pass the first time, you, you got to learn how to pick yourself back up. And as cliche as it may sound, you, you just got to keep moving forward and you got to keep trying. And, you know, sometimes the resources that you use, they, they may not be the best for you. You may need to, you need to ask some people who, who you also know who are taking the exam. Uh, like, what did you use? Uh, what helped you like overcome test anxiety or whatever issue you may have? Um, and I, I don't I don't mean to be rude when I say issue. I just <laughs> I'm just trying to be you know I'm just trying to generalize the idea of doing what it takes to achieve a goal in this case, which would be to pass the exam. So, um, but yeah, honestly, that's really all I have to say about the exam. Um, like I said, it's going to be on a security plus for me. And the truth be told, um, this is uh, this is only my second exam. I don't really like taking CompTIA exams. Um, when I took my A plus, I passed the core 1001 um, on my first try, but I failed the one at 1002 by like, I want to say 30 points. I was, I, and I'm, I'm, I kind of hate myself for saying this, but I retook the core 1002 less than three weeks after failing it. I passed it, but I wish I would have given myself a little bit more time to study the material. 
but at the same time I don't care <laughs> because I passed the exam yeah um, my mind works in strange ways sometimes and sometimes even contradictory ways um, but yeah I mean yeah I mean that's all I really have to say about the net plus um, now just to uh, lay out the different um, the different um, my, my source material so like I said Mike Myers' course Jason Dion's practice tests the stuff really everybody is using to be honest and the thing is I got all of this for free through my job so I'm, I consider myself blessed for that um, in terms of yeah I, I created my own notes I spent probably countless hours just you know doing practice tests um, I think outside of Jason Dion's test um, there's a, a, a website called exam compass take every quiz on that website for the network plus and take down notes on everything that you get wrong um, like I say it's free and it, it gives you exposure to the different types of questions now those questions really in terms of layout and format they're nothing like the exam but what they do focus on is the core material that you're going to need to understand on the exam so take every quiz on there it's about 25 of them I know that's a lot and there are 20 questions a piece and then take Jason Dion's test I believe those are 90 questions a piece um, I took all of them and then I took two of them over again after a certain amount of time to make sure that I understood what I was doing. The first time I did it, I failed each and every single one of them. I got like a 50 to 60% on every single one. And then I took two of them over again, I ended up getting like the high 80%. So yes, after taking the same test, I still didn't pass it after I'd say about three, four months. Um, but what I did do was I took down notes, I studied the material that I got incorrectly and I, I just kept pushing, man, just kept practicing. There were times where it got really, really boring. I, there were times where I thought, you know, I, I, I'm really not going to understand what I'm doing. But um, the truth is, you know, even though I didn't necessarily pass with the highest score possible, um, I am proud of myself for passing. And I really do think that anybody who truly takes the time to apply themselves can pass this test without too many issues. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that's really all I'm going to have to say. Um about the exam so what I'll do is I'm gonna leave some links in the description for different Udemy courses uh, specifically Mike Myers's course as well as um, the practice questions the exam compass oh and after that um, yeah after I did everything on exam compass once it got around to like the final few weeks before the exam uh, Mike Myers and his videos I didn't watch all of them I probably watched only the ones that I felt like I may have needed to watch like I thought I was gonna need the command line video there wasn't a single question that required command prompt <laughs> um, and then I reviewed the seven second sub name video and then the network topology video uh, watched a couple videos on switches and routers and how those function uh, OSI model things of that nature so I would say um, yeah, all four of those things combined together were very, very helpful in terms of helping me pass the exam. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything that you want to leave in the comment section, feel free to let me know. I will uh, try to respond as soon as I can. But uh, yeah, I hope the rest of you enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. All right, peace.